lakh school children visit Himayu's tomb every day, every year. If 3 lakh children every year in the last 10 years have been exposed to a history which says Delhi is just about 1000 years old, Himayu's tomb is Deenpana, no reference to Indraprast, no reference to Shergar, no reference to others who had come and uh, you know the, the looters who had come and you know you know Ghazni's period, no reference to Hemuchand who defeated Akbar and crowned himself as king at, at, at Purana Kila. How can you take Purana Kila for granted to be Mayus? Archaeological survey of India main objective is to conserve, preserve, protect history of India. What are they doing to protect the 5000 years history of India? Uh, Namaskar, uh, I am Mishra. Main, pichle 20 years I have been uh, working on ancient Indian civilization and culture to create a better understanding and appreciation of our, the roots of our Bharatiya Sanskriti and history. Uh, prior to that, in 94, I was chosen by SIDBI, by the government of India, to be an entrepreneur. I started my career as an entrepreneur and I have done some reasonably okay work like uh, promotion of uh, different uh, products and companies. I have done France 98 World Cup All India promotion with Gillette. I have done uh, World Cup 99 uh, with Jadeja. So things like that, promotions of lot of company products with uh, KLM and uh, Hughes software, etc. And 2000, uh, I think God has a way of putting you in your real stream. God wanted me to do something else. So, I had a, a major breakdown on Jaipur Highway. I almost my second life. And that is what connected me to my ancestral place which is Kampilya, which is considered the birthplace of Draupadi. I won't say considered because I was grown up in a school Loreto where they would say it's considered, it's not. But it's the birthplace of Draupadi, the Rajdhani of Panchal. And now, uh, as per tradition, I had to go and do puja there. And that's when suddenly, you know, I I felt the vibes, I felt the urge, and uh, three, four things connected. I always used to wonder my why my grandmother told me stories about Draupadi when I was small. I always wondered why she named me Thaneshwari. Thaneshwari is the name of Kurukshetra. So I think a struggle was in store for me. And uh, the path for that I found in 2000. I started an organization called Draupadi Dream Trust. And uh, my first conference, international conference happened in 2010. How deep are the roots of Indian civilization? Then in 2012, about Mahabharata historicity. Then in 2013, the Panchal. Then 2015, I did Rigveda, Indus Valley civilization. 2017, Indra, 16, Indraprast, the first ever international conference on Indraprast. And uh, then 2017, again Mahabharata Manthan. 2018, Ganga. Because Ganga and Jamna are the two rivers where our most ancient cities of North India where the two epics happened were there. So, during this journey, I found something horribly lacking in the way our people in culture look at culture. And of course, history we all know how HRD works. Uh, we all know about the influence that happened from the 60s. But my focus is not on the history, but on the culture part. When I was doing all this work, I was very keen that we should start showcasing, just not talking about it. And so I started a project called Showcasing Indraprast at the place of Indraprast. That's where I came to know the deplorable state of the archaeology department of our country and vis-a-vis -vis All India. But special focus on Delhi, this is what the topic is going to be today. Uh, 
To understand this topic, we must understand first what are the bylaws, what are the conditions, and what is ASI meant for. Uh, as I understand from the history of ASI, uh, most of the during the time of the Britishers, it was the CPW who would take up. They had not really, they were just exploring. Cunningham was the first person, Alexander Cunningham. We need to know the aims and objectives of ASI, Archaeological Survey. We need to know about the State Departments. And we need to know the politics that has been played with the Bharatiya Sanskriti over this period. Uh, basically, four points I have uh, understood. There is a sectarian application of the rules. There is a biased conventions that have been created. There is a destruction of significant landmarks of history, which I have seen it as recently as 2018. And there is a misguided development for tourism attraction. So, what is the aim of ASI? Basically, it was started, as I said, by Alexander Cunningham. Earlier, there used to be in Bengal, the Bengal Asiatic Society, which was actually made to ask us to make the rules and regulations because as Cunningham was exploring all the parts of India, he realized the great cultural wealth there was and it was set up in 1861, ASI. The main objective of ASI, of course, was to explore, excavate, conserve, preserve and protect the monuments and the sites which are of national and international importance. It regulates all the archaeological activities all over the country, the monuments, the sites, uh, it creates museums, there are these acts, the, you know, uh, the act of monument and archaeological sites, it, uh, 1958, again it was reinforced. As they moved on, they started uh, evaluating this work and they started enhancing or deleting or adding to the acts for whatever reasons. The last was in, I think, 2011, when a hotel came up and it was covering one of the archaeological buildings. So, they said within 300 uh, meters, nothing can be done. So, this is basically a lot of technical issues related to archaeology, how they do it. They have circles, they have almost all over India, they have divided into various branches, circles and then they have each branch under which in each state, a bigger state has two circles, smaller state have one circle, then they have museums, they have, uh, uh, they work through even they work on, uh, I would say, numismatics, that is coins, they work on inscriptions, they work through these state branches on various schemes have been formulated and uh, these branches under the headquarters which is at Delhi. The it, organization has a large workforce. Now, this is very critical. The this is from the website of ASI. It has a large workforce, trained archaeologists, conservation experts and epigraphists, architects, scientists, all this is supposed to be under ASI. If they have such a huge last force of archaeologists, I want to ask one question today. Today, the status in archaeology is that there is no say of an archaeologist in the archaeological survey of India. Organization meant for archaeology has no place for an archaeologist to raise his voice and I am going to give you an example and many examples are there, but I will come with a specific Delhi based example. So, the reality is that these trained professional archaeologists are only to explore and conserve area but the command is in the hand of outsiders, it is in the hand of architects, it is in the hand of IAS officers. Okay. Uh, this is an information I have got just 10 days back from an archaeologist till he said do not name me madam, but our situation is such that we are made in charge of an area, but we have no say who is doing what in the area, what is the cost of getting a work done. So, obviously, the, if the situation is such, what do you expect the archaeological status of India to be? 
Archaeological Survey of India is notified by an archaeological archaeologist invariably under IAS officials with remote control of vested interests supported by architects. This is the fact that we have to understand and then you will be you will not blame the archaeologists for the terrible condition of archaeology. We all know that there are so many monuments and they come under government of uh, Delhi. Uh, I'll just give a brief through of the antiquity of Delhi. Uh, Bibi Lal was one of the first ones. He did the Purana Kila way back in 72 when he found remains in Hastinapur in 51. He wanted to explore all sites of uh, related to the Mahabharat period because the painted graveyard that he found there, he wanted to cross check is it available in all other places. So, Bibi Dal did uh, Purana Kila, then Lal Kot area which is the um, Meheroli area that was done by B.R. Mani. B.R. Mani ji also did Salimgarh which is the uh, Red Fort area and uh, very few know that Himayu's tomb was also explored and excavated in 1997 by B.R. Mani and Aga Khan foundation. There was a mound. And as per reports written in the book of B.R. Mani, lot of PGW was found there. We all know the location of Himayu's tomb which is very close to Purana Kila. That the painted grey ware pottery, it is a particular type of pottery which has been found at a particular period in time which is supposed to be, which is as per archaeologists linked to the period of the Mahabharata war. So, the period of Mahabharata is normally till date as per B.B. Lal's findings is linked to wherever there is painted grey ware that means this site at one time must have been a site of the Mahabharata period when the war happened. When I am saying period means that the time of the war. Uh, these, these are the painted grey ware pieces that were found by Dr. B.B. Lal shreds. Now, Purana Kila has been excavated by Bibi Lal, then in 69, again ASI did it, then again last in 2014, by uh, again ASI it was done. They have found layers at Purana Kila which, which date to different periods of India's history. Secondly, let us say the archaeological uh, work by the department of uh, Delhi, they basically two important sites, there were many sites were explored, but Borgar and Mandoli. These are both places where they not only have found PGW which is linked that they have also found Harappa. Now, A.K. Sharma had found prehistoric tools. So, that means there is a continuity of uh, civilization and habitation in Delhi for many, many centuries. Uh, we all know the story of Indraprasth, but before Indraprasth, I would like to share with you, as we said Harappan period has been found. Gupta period to Bhatka hai, Shunga, Mauryan, everything has been found in sequence. What we see today is that 5000 years of India's history, let us presume that Indraprastha was technically established at the time of the Mahabharata war, which as per astronomical dating is about 3067 BC, that is approximately plus 2018, 5000 plus years. Uh, the Mughals started establishing in 1192 ke baad. So, 1192 to 11 to 1957 uh, about 650 years and the Britishers came in 57 and left in 47 about 90 years. When we look at our history, when we look at our archaeological monumental sites, we are exposed in Delhi to this. Okay. One of the sites that is the Kutub Minar area has things from the Kupta period. It has also some previous period, but these are all monuments from a particular period that is the medieval period only. Okay. Why this is so, I would like to emphasize from the archaeological point of view. We are all familiar that the Somnath Mandir was raised to the ground, it was destroyed and we are also familiar that it was remade. How many of us are familiar with the story, the painful story of Patel 
Gadgil and Munshi, that how much trouble they went to recreate that. Why I am narrating this? Because this is the story that I am facing now at Indraprast, Delhi. When Patel visited soon after partition the site, Gadgil told him, now is the time for us to rebuild our lost heritage. And at a public meeting, then and there in the same evening, Mr. Patel announced, yes, we will rebuild it with government support. And he told Gadgilji and he told Munshi, start the process. The process started. Obviously, in government, the process starts and the paperwork is done and it is placed. If you would remember, education ministry was the custodian of culture at that time and ASI automatically was under the control of education minister of that time. They were countered with an argument by the education minister when the first meeting, why should we rebuild a temple? Let it go to ASI, let them maintain the ruins as they are. So, these people countered saying, why not? If we can give so much of money to rebuild, renovate the Majjits and the different uh, medieval period uh, buildings, why not our temple? And this fight continued. Finally, it went up to Gandhiji. I would like to state very clearly here, I am a great admirer of Nehruji and Indira Gandhi for a very different reason. We happened to have sold our family house to Motilal Nehru in 1919 for 18,000 rupees. So, there was this big emotional fascination, oh this is the family that rose up to greatness because the house that was the prime location in Allahabad went to them and they could have that status and aura of coming into the national life. But these, all this when I read now, I feel sad that how they were influenced by a colonial mindset. So, when the matter went up to Gandhi ji, he says, Banna to chahiye mandir, lekin not on government money. And the matter had to be halted, but Gadgil and Munshi ji did not give up. Soon after, of course, Patel, Mr. Patel died, but they carried on. And finally, the day came when the Pran Pratishtha, that had to be done and Rajendra Prasad ji was invited. That's where Nehru got very angry. And he told Prasad ji, Ki, no, you cannot go there. This is Hindu revivalism. And he called Munshi and he said, Mr. Munshi, I don't like you. I don't like the way you have doing this Hindu revivalism. It's not good for us. Mr. Munshi was so hurt, pained. He didn't say anything. He says, I will reply to you. And I would request all of you to go on the net and read the Munshi papers now. In detail, he describes the whole details of how the meetings happened, what happened, who said what, etc., etc. And finally, he again says the same thing that I thought secularism means equality for all religions. So, if your ASI is getting money to do this and this and this, why not our temple? And of course, Rajendra Prasad ji did not listen to Mr. Nehru and Nehru ji, uh, he went and inaugurated and so today we have that building. Why I have narrated this small little fact is because when we started surveying Delhi, the archaeological sites of Delhi, we could not find a single site that has any plaque or any notification saying, Yes, this is a site linked to ancient India. And we found some inscriptions in books. So, we hunted and where they are and they were lying in some go down in Lal Kila, got them out, put, 
we created so much pressure advocacy that they had no choice that now they are actually at Purana Kila. There is an inscription called, there are two inscriptions which are uh, called the, uh, it is a Sanskrit in inscription, Nagori script mein hai. And both are related to dedication of a bauli by a businessman to the people of Indraprasth. So, one is found in Narayana, one is found in Raisina Hill where we are sitting. It is on the Raisina road or the whole area here. So, obviously, if in 1300, these inscriptions are talking of Indraprasth, Indraprasth has existed. If the Mughal books, the Razam Nama is talking of Indraprasth, Indraprasth had existed. I am going to show you some of the books also that through which we uh, came to know about this. Uh, but before that, as I was saying that this whole idea about recreating Indraprasth at Purana Kila started. And we approached the ASI and we were told that no, we cannot have an MOU with you. And why? There is no answer. I asked one simple question today to everybody. If the organization of an Imam, you all know Aga Khan is an Imam. If ASI can have an MOU with Aga Khan Foundation, which is a religious organization, why it cannot have an association with a non-religious organization to recreate and tell the history of Delhi. Aga Khan is doing. So, when we are saying that we are seeing these monuments here, this work started in 70s. And we all know how things have changed in the 60s and 70s in terms of history and the way we look at history. And so, that is the time ASI established an uh, 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 um, office in, inside uh, Purana Kila. Now, when they established an office inside Purana Kila, they do it in a building which is called the Old School Building. In 2019, just a few months ago, these people have demolished that building. This is the newspaper report. In 2017 and 18, we made presentations to the ministry. The secretary agreed that we will be doing a museum in that school building to tell the journey of Delhi from Indraprasth to till the time. And the letter is with me from the ministry, that ministry will give you the grant, but you have to tie up with ASI to do the, get the building uh, association. And the moment that letter went, the activity started and the building was broken. So, we had been pushing for what that since we see only this part of Delhi, we should also see the ancient part of Delhi. Now, what does archaeology mean? Archaeology means the oldest known remains. Okay. So, what these people had done, ASI and Aga Khan Foundation, they had created a plan in the master plan of Delhi to name different areas of Delhi as archaeology parks. So, there is a Meroli archaeology park and this whole area which is the <coughs> Purana Kila area, they called it Deen Pana archaeology park. So, my simple question is what does Deen Pana have to do with archaeology? I mean have you dug anything out and says Deen Pana is written there? Yes, we know that Humayu when he came very clearly mentioned in Aine Akbari that Himayu came and settled on the Purana Kila, the Indrapat Kila and built a wall with a plan to create a city called Dinpana for his religious people. But before he could complete, Shesha Suri came and defeated him. And then when he comes back after five years, he ruled only for a few months because he had a very sad fall from the library created by Shesha Suri. So, the idea of creating a city by the name of Dinpana did not happen. And how do you identify that this city is Dinpana? So, you, you cannot link Dinpana to archaeology in any way. We fought for that and thankfully now we have got the name rechased to Indraprasth Archaeology Park.
Now, if that is an interpretist archaeology park, why should we not have a museum to tell the history of Delhi from Indraprasth to till 1950 when it became a republic? That is where this is what actually led me to the whole history and archaeology of Delhi. So, I went hunting to find places I could not find. When they demolished the building ASI, I approached them that how could you demolish a building? They said, no, it is not. Mughal, it is not medieval architecture, it is not colonial architecture. So, that means somebody who is neither colonial nor medieval has no right to live in India. So, I said then you should kill all of us. Nay, nay, madam, aap to mazak kar rahe ho. Kame mazak nahi kar rahe you have sent out a message for which we have been fighting that you are going to follow the policy that happened in Somnath temple. There was Gadgil and Munshi to fight that and Patel to fight that. Today, because there are no stalwarts like that, you can get away with what you want to do. I showed them this notification which ASI people themselves did not know. This is a 1911 uh, uh, notification where they are protecting the Purana Kila. If this is a 1911 notification, before that in 1903, we have pictures to say that there used to be a in 1987 records, till 1987 records, Indraprasth is a revenue district with a revenue of 2013 rupees or something. And within that, there was a proper basti with uh, concrete housing. When the Britishers came to plan for their imperial city, they identified the focal area of Indraprasth, which was the Pandav area. And they said, for uh, I mean, let me tell you that Purana Kila was the central point of the Pandavas, where they used to stay. The whole uh, part, uh, Indraprasth is a city state. Uh, it included Tilpat, Bagpat, Panipat, Sonipat, and Indraprasth. And just today, as we have Delhi and New Delhi, it is Delhi uh, city state. It continued. So, this inscription, uh, this mortification is in 11 when their city was shifting capital. But before that, in 2000, 1903, they had demolished the uh, lot of buildings there. But inside Purana Kila, we find this old school building and we find a Kunti temple. Now, ASI officials tell me that they are not colonial, they are not medieval, so they have no right to exist inside Purana Kila. If ASI could have an office in that building for over 60 years, if for 60 years, as per their record, they are saying that we shifted here and since then, uh, you know, this is not a very old building, I said, okay, then you give me proof. They are not able till date to give me the proof when that building was made, who was the architect, what was the purpose, pointed questions they do not have. So, according to my understanding, if a site is protected, no new construction can happen inside that area. If this whole area of Purana Kila was protected in 1911, how come this building that is there created in 1950, when in 1950 they, the ASI had already moved there? So, they are hiding something. Secondly, even if it was there and they, it was building was there and not affecting the uh, one condition is that any new building should not uh, hide the existing building. What is inside Purana Kila? Anybody know? Half the people in Delhi did not even know there was a school building inside Purana Kila. The school that had to be shifted for ASI to go there is now on Pandara Road. And those people, if you go out and see their building so sweetly, they have created a, a sort of painting of Purana Kila on their walls to give that feeling that at one time we were inside Purana Kila. They were displaced. So, there is a Kilai Kona which is in the Koshan, jahan hamare mandir ka area hota hai, wahan pe Kilai Kona hai, jahan ke puja hoti thi. There is a library there and there are these uh, cells, all from Sher Shah Suri period. Nowhere do you find mention about Sher Shah Suri at all. You will only find him, I use this, him, I use that, him, I use that. So, archaeological survey of India main objective is to conserve, preserve, protect history of India. What are they doing to protect the 5000 years history of India? Is not that deplorable even to think about? What is 
this is some of the findings of the excavations of Purana Kila. They found ring wells. This is the site that was excavated. This is the plan we had given them that in the school building will be a museum, but the site that you have excavated here and especially areas where you find the ring wells and you have found the Murti of Shiva, etc. Let us cover that with uh, 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 prefab structure with glass which is facing the library and so people coming from outside can actually see the depth of India's Delhi's antiquity. ASI somehow is not willing to do this and we want to know why. Why are they scared to showcase ancient India to the Indians? This is the school building, stalwarts like Ghosh, Bibi Lal have had offices there, have operated from there because it was the uh, Delhi Circle ka, you know, archaeology division and this building has now been reduced to a, they started uh, destroying and now you see they have covered it with green grass. All happened in 10 days time because here I was raising issues with the minister and I was raising issues with the secretary, but unfortunately both were out of town. In the meantime, our very enterprising IAS officer DG gave orders, Girado. This is this word that we have got from the people who were in the meeting, Girado. Just recently. Few months back. Few months back. Now what is happening in archaeology in Himayus too? So, this is one part that there is no intention to showcase any point. Is it not a right on our part to ask that point where the inscription of 1300 telling about Indrapras found should be enclosed and a plaque put there? In Raisina where it was found, it is all documented where it was found, plaque put there. There is a uh, on the Kalkaji area, there is this place where uh, there is Ashoka inscription which talks about a Tilpat road, Indraprat to Tilpat road and it also mentions ki army yahan se nikli thi. Is it wrong on our part to ask that wahan pe a plaque laka ke usko ek a point of uh, interest for people of in, uh, Delhi to know their history put up there? Not a single point is of ancient history of Delhi. In fact, the contrary is happening. So now I am coming to Purana Kila. As I said, 1997 there was an excavation. Uh, from the horse's mouth, I have interacted with our previous uh, tourism minister, uh, Jagmohanji, very closely. He was at one time Lieutenant Governor, you know, he was Vice Chairman of DDA also, you know. So a group of people and of course, people from Aga Khan and Intac approached him that, you know, there is a lot of basti here, there is a lot of, uh, you know, untidiness, these are all places we want to clean up and make them look nice so people can come and walk, etc, etc. He says, aap kyu karoge, main DDA ki taraf se sab kar dunga. Gradually, the whole area was vacated and uh, of course, Mo Jagmohanji, the government went out of power at that time. And the new government came and uh, obviously the power went back to people who have vested interests. The mount of 1997 where a lot of PGW which is linked to Mahabad period is found has been demolished. A plan was obviously in the pipeline and was happening for long to make Himayu's tomb uh, a very important place for tourism attraction. Uh, by the way, there is no record to say that this is Himayu's tomb. Okay, there is no writing to show this is Himayu's tomb. This is my understanding. From what I understand, the quotation that I have got from Aine Akbari, it says Himayu's tomb was in Tilokri, which is the Maharani Bagh area. I don't know if Tilokri extended up to Nizamuddin because Nizamuddin is older than Mahabar than uh, that period. Okay. Anyway, now what is happening at Himayu's tomb is a matter of great concern because from the horse's mouth again, there is a director just retired from ASI, Jamal Hassan, Syed Jamal Hassan. The first one to raise an issue on this, there is a lady from Aligarh Muslim University, Mustafa uh, Seema, some, what is her name, Mustafa, I forget her name. In the name of 
promoting cultural tourism, they are not preserving, not conserving, they are completely renovating. They have made it into a completely new building. What is the pain of the archaeologist? We get trained in archaeologists to identify the antiquity of a place. We take the plaster, we take little remains there, even to the grains. And we find out from dating how old is the building. Today, if an archaeologist takes his students and says, okay, let us test the antiquity of Himayu's tomb, all he will find is a piece of plaster which is 2017, 2016, 2018. There is no way to know the antiquity. Second thing, the mound area. Now, we all know that as per the law, nothing had to be created in and around a monument. You cannot dig more than one feet. A four meter deep hall has been created to tell the history of Humayu's tomb. What is being promoted through ASI book stalls at Himayu's tomb, at Purana Kila, at other ASI stalls is a book called a children's book on Himayu's tomb, which starts with the image of Purana Kila says Din Pana. And inside pages say it is about 1000 years old. I do not know from where they are getting the date. Indirectly, and they claim in their reports that 3 lakh school children visit Himayu's tomb every day, every year. If 3 lakh children every year in the last 10 years have been exposed to a history which says Delhi is just about 1000 years old, Himayu's tomb is Deenpana, no reference to Indrapras, no reference to Shergar. No reference to others who had come and uh, you know the, the looters who had come and you know you know Ghazni's period. No reference to Hemuchand who defeated Akbar and crowned himself as king at, at, at Purana Kila. How can you take Purana Kila for granted to be Mayus? When your own books, when history books, Nayane Akbari says he came and landed at Indraprath. So, Whose responsibility it is? It is the responsibility of Archaeological Survey of India. They are the custodians of the monument. Whatever content is promoted about a monument is the responsibility of ASI. But they are not listening. And we through an RTI, we got the DPR of the proposed uh, interpretation center and the DPR says what? The DPR says it starts from the Sultanate period. So, the history of Delhi in Imayu's tomb is going to start from the Sultanate period. As I was saying, they have been having lot of rules and regulations and uh, this is the conservation work that was done newly and uh, very nicely the archaeologist Dr. Uh, Jamal Hassan says that archaeologists job is to do rafugari. They are supposed to do rafu, they are not supposed to change the uh, the, sig the, the, the structure or the main uh, thing in any way. What is happening? So, these are different uh, rules. Now, this is and unfortunately, the work that has been done, you see it is already in a bad shape. This is, these are pictures from the same archaeologist, Dr. Jamal. He gave it to me just 10 days back. When I told him I am preparing a paper on, uh, uh, so not 10 days, sorry, 5 days back. Now, Ancient Monument Archaeological Sites and Remains Act 1958 ke hisab se, these are the points that you are not supposed to do this, you are not supposed to do that, you are only supposed to conserve and preserve and protect and not change the nature of the monument. But today the Himayas tomb is being completely, the same thing is happening at Nila Gumbad. Funny thing is happening at Nila Gumbad. It is a historical point, why? Because uh, when the Sabdajang tomb was being made, the, the, the nobles who made it, they took out the pathar, the, the from there, stone and put it here. So, it has a historical relevance. So, it should remain as it is, but now they are putting a new stone to it. I do not 
understand how can ASI go on flouting their own rules and regulations and nobody is opening their mouth, nobody is saying anything. How deplorable can this go? So, these are pictures of the monument which has already been renovated and in a mess. So, as I was saying that the background comes back that the mindset, the rules and regulations that were set by the education minister in 1947 are being followed and there has been no one so far to have raised this issue. This is the how I came to know about the Idinpana archaeology park was through this Times of India uh, article in 2015. I raised up the matter, thankfully culture ministry at once took up the matter. I gave them all documents and uh, they changed it to Indraprast archaeology park. This was a very, very, very long fight and Purana Kila, old fort Indraprast. Uh, these are all the communications that we did. We took up the matters at every point and the idea was to reinstate the Bharata Itihas. How can you reinstate Bharata and start? How can you talk, tell our people about the history of Bharat if you do not showcase? Seeing is believing. Now, anybody coming to Delhi will see this. When they see this, what impression do we get? We get an impression that Delhi is just about 400, 500 years old. Interestingly, we found this very, very old picture of uh, Purana Kila in one of the British books. And uh, it really looks like a very uh, ethnic type of a building. If you see it, because the picture unfortunately it is not very clear, I tried my best to increase the thing. And what happened from 1970 till date is, if you go to the Kilai Kona, you can actually see the patchwork where they have tried to impose Ayat, not done nicely. You can see the, it has been Jabardasti Wala, you know, forcefully put over there. They are not even following their own acts, they are not following their own rules and regulations. So, where is the history of Delhi that talks of Harappa? Where is the history of Delhi that talks of Gupta period? Where is the history of Delhi that talks of uh, Kushan and Shunga and other periods? Where is the history of Delhi? It has to come one in books, the other through archaeological remains. And when our archaeologists have found all this, Archaeologists from ASI have found it, archaeologists from Department of Archaeology in Delhi have found it. Why it is not showcased? So, whom do we blame and how do we go ahead in ensuring that this will not happen, this will not be allowed to happen? How do we do that? So, we had, as I said, started this whole process of getting the Indraprastha Archaeology Park named. We also had organized the conference on Indraprastha first international conference and we also organized a, we forced ourselves inside Purana Kila and one of the officials in ASI, one of the, now he has become a director, writes a letter saying that madam you are doing commercial activity. I said give me proof. When we do an exercise like uh, a, a, an, an event on archaeology or any culture, we involved students from the universities who interned with us and they were there and since they were there, we put up banners of the two universities who Amity and Delhi University that these students are helping us. Is that commercialization? So, the state of archaeology in Delhi and in India is deplorable not because we have do not have good archaeologists. It is not deplorable because the archaeologists have not worked hard to find the evidences. It is deplorable because we do not have a dispensation that will allow them to function. This is the old village I was talking about. In 1903, this village was demolished. This is the revenue map of Delhi of 1887 from the records of imperial city which are in DDA. It talks about Delhi's, I will just tell you the amount, uh, these are the two inscriptions that I was talking about. One is from Narayana and one is from 
uh, it's Sanskrit in Nagori script. This is from Dirade. Uh, then we had, achha, ha, when it was being protected early in the, in, uh, you know, 1911, actually the Britishers had found a uh, Raja Bhojka inscription there. So, Delhi actually unfortunately is known by its nickname Delhi rather than its original name. And uh, at one time it was also known as Dillipura, it was also known as Dillika. Uh, the Meroli area has a very important temple called the Shakti Peet temple, which is linked to uh, one of the sisters of Krishna. How many people know that? Is it not the responsibility of ASI to uh, identify that place and put a name there? The whole idea that evidence clearly establishes that the Purana Kila uh, represents Pura, uh, Indraprast, evidence clearly establishes that we have a continuity of history from the Harappan to prehistory. We all know it was Khanda Prast before the, uh, the whole uh, you know, uh, jungles were cut and made into a city. And if you read in the Mahabharata, how the city of Indraprast, the only planned city of this area was Indraprast, which spread across the whole area. Panipat was for the people who were into business. Tilpat was more agricultural. Sonipat was for the Sunars and the, you know, the more of artisans. So, it came to be known as Sonipat from the Sona because uh, uh, they had identified different areas and this whole area of the zoo and Purana Kila was the area which the Pandavas created, the point where the Maya grave was created and flora, fauna, uh, you know, ponds, tanks, everything was restored because they said we have destroyed a forest, we should come back and create that flora and fauna. Each and every name of a tree is mentioned, the names of animals etc. are mentioned. But today when we uh, see the papers, we are saying that Intech is taking somebody for a walk of Tughlaqabad city, taking for a walk of Khilji city. For heaven's sake, they are not cities, they were citadels, they are cantonments, they were Chavnis of the rulers who came and to protect themselves from any further attack, they would make a small little cantonment and sit there. But the larger area is in the press. So you are misleading people, misrepresenting history to generations for the last 70 years with no stop, nobody is even opening their mouth against it. Now, this is Aini Akbari, what does it say? You know 1500 and Akbar's rule, 15, Aini Akbari, 1551, Himayu restored the, the citadel of Indraprast and named it Dinpana. Okay. Then History of India, Volume 3 by Professor John what does he say? Everybody is talking of Indraprast. Everybody is talking of Indraprast. Ghazni Malik came here, he looted the killer of Indraprast. Then we have this 18, uh, the gazetteer of Punjab and uh, government. You see, at one time, Delhi was either under Punjab, sometimes it was under Haryana. So, it, there was a lot of uh, confusion, Punjab and Haryana also. They are all talking about this whole area being in the Prast. These are the land revenue records that I was talking and here you see 2000 something, 2091 rupees was the revenue in 1877 from a designated revenue district by the name of Indraprast. Why are we not restoring the status of Indraprast? Why are we not restoring the status of archaeologists who have found Indraprast, the archaeologists who have found antiquity of Delhi, the archaeologists who have worked over period and the historians who have written about it. This is another book, George Bell and Sons London, Ram and Mahabharat, they talk about this. So, the whole idea in ASI has been follow the rules set in 1947 that only certain types of buildings, you know something, how many buildings are there, you know about uh, ASI under them has about uh, 4000 buildings, 3898 uh, buildings out of which 300 are, uh, about 300 I think are the uh, Muslim buildings, the monument, uh, you know the um, 
their uh, majids, etc. So, out of three, almost 4000, the whole money is going to the 300 only. And if it is only going to these 300 uh, monuments, uh, who takes care of the other? Recently, there was a lecture where talked about build hist building history. And in building history, again they came back to one very interesting point. It has nothing to do with, of course, ASI, that uh, the, the gazetteers are not correct. The gazetteers were made under influence of the uh, Hindu rulers, because each and every gazetteer talks about Indraprastha. So, I said, fine, gazetteers are not correct. What about the history of Sultanate India? What about the history of Mughal India? When they talk about Indraprastha, then what do we do? Archaeological survey of India, I think it is time has to wake up to the fact, first archaeology is the domain of an archaeologist, not an architect. Architect is a supplementary technical person who will help archaeologists to maintain and preserve and conserve. Because arch architects are not meant to do that, architects are only meant to provide some technical input that if I have to uh, stop like when we were planning for the Indraprastha protection of that ex excavated site, the fear was that water will drain in. So, then we called in my arch uh, architect and she said no, there is, a, uh, there is a system in which we can stop the drainage uh, coming in, there is a cemented wall created all around and anyways you have exposed expose the site, it is already exposed and water is going in seeping in. So, how, why are you not protecting it? When you have found something so critical there, you, it is your first priority to do it. But they will not. You go to Shishupalgar, uh, so, uh, there also they try to, uh, you, know, they, you know, in the name of protection what they have done, they just put a shed on top. How can you protect an excavated site with just a shed? It has to be protected from the from the rain, hailstorm, water, everything. So it needs a cover. It needs a cover, but a cover such that the people from outside can see it. That is what our suggestion was. The only site that has been to some extent protected, I would say, is in Gujarat, the Dholavira site. But that also needs proper attention because if we do not preserve it in a very high tech way in which it can be covered and uh, you know in an environment free uh, atmosphere so that the rainstorm and this you know all these things do not natural calamities do not affect it we will lose that also so the topic says uh, deplorable state of archaeological survey of india i think uh, as a body archaeological survey of india has all the rules and regulations in place the problem is they do not follow their own rules and regulations, they are biased, they have no care for something which is more than 500 or 600 years old because for them it is not revenue generating which is a misperception in ASI. It is a misperception in, our, in the tourism department that only a well decorated painted building is going to draw uh, the crowd. I think there will be more people to come and see a ring well which was made centuries ago. There will be more interest in people to see the type of pottery, the painted grey ware pottery or the northern black ware, polished ware pottery that existed thousands of years ago. If only you protect and show them. Yes, they have a small museum inside Purana Kila where they have put up huge pictures and they have put up some this thing. But seeing is believing, when you see something on the shelf it is different, but when you see something live, why we cannot have a archaeology walk through park, a archaeology walk through museum, which actually showcases the real archaeology of Delhi. There has not been a single archaeologist deputed to take stock of the high rise buildings being made which are digging deep deep into the ground, the metro that is digging deep tunnels all around. I do not know how many artifacts must have been found. We are not saying stop development, definitely keep up the development, but at least mark that place that this is the place in which this was found. 
and take that to the museum. They don't listen. They are only fighting court cases and I don't know why they are fighting court cases. They want to remove the Kunti Mandir also from Purana Kila, saying this is not a Kunti Mandir. Oh my God, if that is not a Kunti Mandir, where was Kunti Mandir? Her brothers, her sons will make it inside Purana Kila only, where that was their original place. I could stress on a few statistics or data if you want how many monuments are there and what is their names, etc. Uh, a few of them. I think I had already mentioned about the main ones, uh, Salim Gard excavated site, Lal Kot excavated site, Purana Kila excavated site and uh, all these, um, the Delhi government had done Mandoli and, Bor and uh, Borgar and uh, there is a site near Najafgarh, they have found a lot of uh, Harappan period uh, remains. But the saddest part is this, you know, the saddest part is this, that 5000 years of history is not showcased anywhere in Delhi. 5000 years of history is brushed aside in books in 5 pages, 600 years of history is taught to us in 6000 pages and 90 years of British rule of course another 200-300 pages. What a pleasant sight it would be next, next to the library if we have this site showcased and people come and see that this is what happened in medieval period, this is what happened in ancient period and there was this school building which was very close to this place where this is what happened during the British period and here we see the history of Delhi right from the beginning till the end. But ASI does not believe in that. It's a lovely school building. It was made with those 9 inches walls with huge halls, ideal for a small museum. So, this is the deplorable state. I have very, very aptly said regarding the work that has happened at Purana Kila, they brought in these machines. When you are touching a, a site of historical importance, it is a delicate thing. So, it is a goldsmith's work not a blacksmith's work. NBCC is a hardcore brick and mortar company. They were asked to do the work there. How can a gold, a blacksmith do the delicate work of a goldsmith? It's sad, it's painful and uh, I think it's, it's reached the height where it can't go any worse. And I think today is a very important day. I want to thank Srijan for taking up this deplorable state of archaeology in Delhi. The, the funny part is we do not see any archaeology in Delhi. So, when he asked me to talk about archaeology in Delhi, I was saying where is the archaeology in Delhi? It is lying in one small corner in one room and if you go to the antiquities department, they are all scattered in such a, you know, they are put in big, big bags and boxes and put around. I, we can have a fantastic museum at Purana Kila to talk about the, to showcase the archaeology of Delhi. And uh, this is a platform which hopefully will one day uh, make the authorities wake up to the fact that if they go on flouting their own rules, someday somebody will challenge them. And I think Draupadi Trust will not lag behind because after all it was founded from the land of birthplace of Draupadi to highlight ancient Indian history and culture and we propose to take it as far as possible to any extent possible and reinstate Indraprasth and Bharatya Sanskriti to its deserving high status, especially the land which beckoned, which was the center for thousands of years. Carl Stephens in his book in 1967 writes on the history of Delhi that we all know Pandavas ruled for 30 generations and then the Gautamas came and others, you know, I have the whole history of uh, lineage of Delhi, that after Yudhishthir for many centuries, 
Delhi was the center of not only India but north whole of Aryavarta and it remained the capital of North India for a very, very long time. And that is why everybody who came, they came to attack Delhi. Road was Delhi. So we owe it to Delhi, we owe it to ourselves, we owe it to Bharatiya Sanskriti, we owe it to our future generation that if we do not nourish the roots of our generation, of our Sanskriti, if we do not nourish the roots of our history, we will lose the tree that had given us shelter for so many thousands of years. Thank you. महाभारत काल के बाद जो आपने बताया कि हजार साल तो इस तीन हजार या चार हजार साल में कहीं हमने आर्कियोलॉजी ने कोई चीज निकाली है जैसे मैं गया मैं गया था तो गया मैं चालीस मीटर नीचे तक उन्होंने पुराना किला की एक्सकेवेशन का बताती हूँ बिकॉज मेजर फोकस पुराना किला का हुआ है एंड ऑफ कोर्स हरप्पन तो सब कई जगह मिला है नजबगढ़ में मिला है इधर सलीम पुराना किला की जो सीक्वेंसिंग है दे हैव फाउंड पी जी डब्ल्यू उसके ऊपर दे हैव फाउंड कुशान पीरियड द मौर्य पीरियड द गुप्ता पीरियड सारे दो हजार हाँ दो हजार साल के हैं उससे पहले दो हजार साल का जो गैप है हाँ हाँ तो कुशान पीरियड हाँ हाँ उस बीच में क्या था उस बीच में क्या था दिल्ली में नहीं नहीं आर्कियोलॉजी ओनली टॉक सी द लिमिटेशंस ऑफ आर्कियोलॉजी आप समझिए लिमिटेशंस ऑफ आर्कियोलॉजी इज दिस दैट व्हेन दे डिग दे विल ओनली गो बाय द डिफरेंट सीक्वेंसेस दैट दे हैव फाउंड एंड द मटेरियल दे हैव फाउंड एंड दे विल डू द डेटिंग ऑफ दैट एज पर आर्कियोलॉजिकल डेटिंग द डेट ऑफ महाभारत वॉर इवन कनिंग हेम इट इवन प्रोफेसर बीबी लाल सेज इट बीबी लाल तो खैर उसको थाउजेंड ईयर्स बी बोलते हैं वेर एज कनिंग हेम सेज फोर्टीन हंड्रेड That means खाली तीन हजार साल पुरानी हिस्ट्री है लेकिन उस समय की जो लाइफ स्टाइल थी विच वॉज एक्सुटली कॉन्स्टेंट फॉर अ लॉन्ग पीरियड इनफैक्ट अगर हम अपने अभी भी ट्रेडिशन देखेंगे रिचुअल्स देखेंगे वी आर फॉलोइंग द सेम रिचुअल्स इन ट्रेडिशन दैट वी फॉलोड दैट वर फॉलोड इन वेदिक टाइम्स आवर संस्कृति हैज रिमेन द सेम so you will not find material substances because we did not live in a materialistic culture hamari lifestyle was very natural so the same type of lifestyle existed they used mud and pottery type of different type of potteries and simple living simple everything was simple they did not even believe and most of the houses that were made were made either of uh, uh, wood or of you know bamboo etc the higher end people would make it of wood and mud structures bhi aa gaye the the only difference between the ordinary people and the uh, richer people was that these were more elaborate more decorated etc whereas the others were not so if you turn talking in terms of archaeological material evidence uh, uh, for many thousands of years the material culture was same so if the material culture was same you will find the same type pottery they have found harappan pottery so it's all same type of pottery what type of thing you are talking about Any carbon dating uh. carbon dating has been done of all these materials na carbon dating ke hisab se to ban bataye na archaeological carbon dating ke hisab se to 1400 bc ke niche kuch hai nahi to 1400 pehle agar aapka war hua and gupta period is around 5 ad ke aas pass aapka hua uske kushan and shunga etc uh, you know 200 300 400 bc tak ja raha hai for many 500 almost 500 years they say that it was the same continuity of same civilization another thing that you have to remember when the war happened you will find today when you today try to connect with uh, the mahabharat and the ramayan period especially the mahabharat period you will find a lot of linkages in southeast asia and south down india okay the chola kings etc it's a kafi panda and all that now north india for a long time was in tatters you have to appreciate that the war happened in this area kurukshetra is not far from here so this whole area was actually in tatters yudhishthir 
लॉन्च्ड हिज अदर ब्रदर जो कजिन था उसका बेटे को उन्होंने यहाँ का राजा बनाया था बट लेटर ऑन इट वॉज परीक्षित फैमिली हु टुक चार्ज परीक्षित बाद फोर्थ जनरेशन बाद निचाशकू वॉज एट हस्तिनापुर बट ही वॉज रूलिंग हेयर ऑल्सो एंड देन देर वॉज अ बे मेजर फ्लड दे हैव फाउंड द रिमेन्स ऑफ दैट फ्लड थ्रू आर्कियोलॉजी एंड दे मूव टू कोशाम्बी नियर अलाहाबाद so they were ruling but they were ruling we have found a inscription of uh, about 1200 something from sultanpur machli sheher in up which says that the raja there was taking the custody of indraprastha we have indraprastha mentioned in jain scriptures we have in buddhist scriptures everywhere so in terms of material culture for a long time the material culture was same so you will find all mud potteries you will find very traditional typical indian houses you will not find anything elaborate and uh, you know the type of things that stone stuff that we saw in medieval period came with the stones etc that aapko nahi milega 